What's something sex education didn't prepare you for? They never taught us about discharge. They went through periods, pregnancy, gender, chromosomes, genitalia, hormones etc., sexuality, but never even mentioned discharge. I thought that there was something wrong with me for years and I was super ashamed of it. Edit, for all those commenting that my parents should have taught me about it. My mother died when I was a little kid and I was raised by a single father who did not receive sex ed. I had no sisters and no women around me when I grew up. So stop blaming my dead mom for this. Like they could have also dropped a quick sometimes your hoo-ha will just randomly decide to destroy your favorite pair of underwear. Yeah, it's not that hard to explain. I mean, we were taught about the different kinds of intersex and the moral dilemma with intersex genital mutilation. It's great that they taught us this, but this affects like 1% of the population. Discharge is a thing 99% of women experience daily. I learned about discharge from a fucking meme when I was like 15 to 16. I got my first period when I was 8 to 9. 7 years of thinking something was wrong with me. Same. I thought I was just living with a yeast infection for years and I was too embarrassed to tell my mom so I just thought I'd have to wait till I was an adult to go to a doctor myself. The internet taught me it was just discharge. Sometimes, no matter how healthy you are, things can go wrong during a pregnancy. You might have to make difficult decisions when that happens. No one can prepare you for that kind of loss. I don't think our society really understands that pregnancy is still dangerous. Also how common early miscarriages are. Everyone hides it like it's some kind of my body causes this and I should be ashamed. So the cycle continues of young women feeling like they did something wrong because this didn't happen to anyone else. Meanwhile likely more than half their friends had early miscarriages too. Sometimes the body just knows early on that something isn't right and terminates it. Sometimes the body is just like me never mind for no good reason. I know it makes people uncomfortable but I talk openly about my two miscarriages because I don't want people to feel as alone and ashamed as I did. It is a tough subject to broach but I think it is important to convey that it isn't anyone's fault. Sometimes it just happens. I'd say most people graduate sex ed not knowing what an ectopic pregnancy is. Certainly most politicians don't know what it is. How to do my taxes. I mean I'm getting fucked. Good sex is like doing your own taxes. You gotta get into it. Reminds me of a saying one of my old bosses would say to me after an angry tirade of kicking cabinets and trash cans, usually after someone he made a deal with screwed him. Remember this, you sleep with a whore, you're liable to get fucked. Good advice really. Oral sex, that was on the job learning. Girl in my math class in high school honestly believed French kissing was oral sex. I'm not lying. When we told her what it was, you could see the look of disgust on her face. I was sheltered. I knew a blow job was when the girl put her mouth on the guy's thing. And I had see a diagram once on a sticker. But I knew nothing past that. I thought I was smart and figured it out. First time my then fiancé asked me if I would want to give him one. I was like yeah okay I know how. I got down there, put the tip in my mouth and started blowing air on it. My husband still dies of laughter when the story comes up. A long time ago I saw a post on some sort of questions you have about sex but are afraid to ask thing and someone asked if I blow too hard during a blow job, will the guy's balls pop? Was that you? Smells, squishy noises, farts, queefs, sweat, saliva, tiredness, cramps, thirst, waterproofing your bed, cleaning up before, cleaning up after. My second time having sex, because both of us were too nervous the first time for it to be very good, I was kind of stunned by how what she got like is this normal? It never looks this wet in porn. I really wish our sex ed teacher had made the realities of sex more clear and really emphasized how unrealistic porn is. To inexperienced het dudes, do not laugh at the queef unless she does. Hold it in, and laugh later. So inexperienced gay dudes are allowed to laugh at queefs first? Sex. Our sex ed was basically just biology class on the reproductive organs and nothing concerning the event or protection. Edit. Um. My inbox. I'm trying to answer as many as I can but it's filling up faster than I can answer. THX for all the attention though. Ours had a lot about STDs. All I can remember about it was the STDs. I know we were taught other stuff like the anatomy of the reproductive organs and I don't remember it being abstinence is the only way. Although I'm pretty sure it leaned toward abstinence is the only guaranteed way to prevent pregnancy, which is true. But I clearly remember a focus on STDs and everything else is a bit of a blur. My human anatomy teacher was basically a sex ed mixed with human anatomy teacher. Brothers didn't hold back on nothing. Our sex ed was taught by our gym teachers and now that I think about it I don't think that's what they had signed up for lol. The mess afterwards. Agreed. I had always assumed everything would just stay inside, not that it came back out. Yep. 
As annoying as it is to leave a warm bed and spend 10 minutes on a toilet releasing cum and cleaning up properly it has to be done. A simple wipe does nothing. This was what was the biggest surprise to me. Having to wash my bed sheets after my first time was so disappointing to me, especially cause the sex itself had been mediocre at best, as most first sexual experiences tend to be, it seems. It almost turned me off from having sex entirely for a while. College freshman me was such a dense motherfucker. The emotional aspect. I went to Catholic school. I kinda got the worst of both worlds with this. On the biology side, it was very clinical. Just put the USB drive in, transfer over the files, done. On the religious side, it was your typical wait till marriage stuff, but it also had a helping of the sex as a beautiful gift from God that allowed two souls to unite or something like that. Look, as a former Catholic I appreciate the big man upstairs giving us sex, but teaching it like that doesn't give a realistic picture of the act, or at least I don't assume it does. It presents it almost like an idealistic, perfect, even mystical act. Neither of those approaches explain the emotional vulnerability and anxiety that comes with being literally and mentally naked with someone doing the same, or not. Nothing about the natural excitement about it either, or the potential awkwardness that comes with having sex for the first time or with a new partner, or about the psychological consequences of sex, positive or negative. It wouldn't surprise me if my classmates and myself were pretty underprepared for it. Yeah it's actually kinda sad that sex was presented as something similar to drugs. Dirty, forbidden and bad consequences. Great way to make kids think sex is something to be ashamed of and not talked about in a comfortable environment. This, but any tips to think the other way around? Cause unfortunately till this day I still think like that due to my upbringings. Vaginismus. What is vaginismus? Vaginismus is when the muscles of a woman's vagina squeeze or spasm when something is entering it, like a tampon or a penis. It can range from mildly uncomfortable to quite painful. I have that, but didn't get diagnosed until last year. I'm 24. For 8 years I just thought that I was too stupid to have sex, that it was supposed to hurt then I tried, or that there was something really wrong with me. Not only did sex ed not teach me about this, fucking doctors didn't teach me about this when I told them about the pain. Use more lube. Didn't learn about it until my boyfriend, now husband, googled it years into our relationship. Everything and anything. My sex ed at school was literally a woman telling us not to do it. Condoms break, the pill doesn't work, you'll get AIDS and die. Far out. Learned this in biology class, where our teacher told us, our first kid was a rubber baby, our second kid was a diaphragm baby, and our third one was a pill baby. Nothing works. Thanks for the heads up, Mr. C. Bro, my sex education class showed us a cartoon where a man penetrates a woman and they have a child. I had no idea you were supposed to thrust, grind etc. It was just, insert dong and suddenly baby. Did y'all watch a clip from The Sims or something? Menstruation. I had mine one to two years before they were talked about at school. As a male, my wife had to teach me about this, because my school never did. They gave male sex education to males and female sex education to the females, but never taught us across the aisle. I really wish we had gotten the full picture so we knew how to support our alternate gender friends properly. I remember being so annoyed at sitting through the lecture and then literally being told no I couldn't go to the bathroom to change my pad during it because the pad demonstration was really important information. Wish I would have told them, I'm good. Been doing it for two years now. Had a male teacher try to stop me from going to the restroom. When he finally gave and I grabbed my backpack because I didn't want to pull out an individual pad. He questioned me in front of the whole class. I had to stop and look him in the eyes and say I'm bleeding from my vagina and need to change my pad. He never questioned me again about anything after. How to clean up afterwards. Put a towel down. They gotta add it would be advised to pee after sexual intercourse. Gatekeeping that fact needs to be illegal. It hurts for both sides. The afterglow is arguably one of the best parts of sex. So preparing us for the post coitus, pre-snuggle cleanup and pee would have been helpful. <laughs> Women actually wanting the dick. I was so worked up about consent and birth control that it never occurred to me that a woman would enjoy my penis until I was told, hey, give me that. Yeah my memory of it is that boys were the horrible gross creatures defiling those beautiful innocent girls, who had the responsibility of fending boys off, that it was only the bad ones who'd ever overtly want to fuck a girl, and only the fallen girls who'd ever acquiesce, and that the most strong, noble thing a girl could ever do was say no, and that women basically tolerated sex because they liked the man for non-sex related reasons. Greater than hey, gimme that. To avoid, use a condom. ETA, since some didn't get the joke. I meant a burning sensation from a rash or urinating caused by an STD. 
Condoms prevent STDs, not literal fire. The cost of raising a child. Vasectomies are cheaper for sure. Mine was a $40 copay. Also that if you want a vasectomy or a tubal ligation you will need to get a physician to okay it and if you are young the doctors will likely push back as they are not easily reversible. Some physicians will straight up tell you that it's not a responsible choice at your age. Also that IUDs can be a painful procedure. My vasectomy was super easy, I was chatting with the doctor the whole time, didn't need general anesthesia. Some general discomfort but the painful part is greatly exaggerated. Um we did that exercise in health class, but you had to roll two dice and that was correlated to your salary. Then there was no guidance on what you actually needed. I rolled terribly and had to convince my parents too. A use the dial-up internet and block the phone all night to look up baby stuff B. I'm not pregnant. I'm the vagina is lower than you expect. Also in reverse, the penis is higher than you think. Easier to spot, though. For some odd reason the dick is in the front not the bottom. That girls want to have sex too, but society tells them to hide that fact. Also, wetness, like dripping down, noticeable under the shower, wetness. It dials down the intimidation factor when you figure this point out. It could also makes women a bit more relatable. It never quite could grasp why my GF could not embrace her newfound sexuality as something to celebrate. In the back of her mind, she could not match the image she wanted to present to the world with someone who, to be painfully direct, enjoyed sucking cock. The wetness for sure. Nobody ever explained that one. Finding that for the first time was pretty damn amazing. That girls like sex. For a while, I thought they were just doing it so that guys would like them. I tried to be nice and finish quick. Lost a few partners before I realized what was up. I think the mindset that girls don't like sex or aren't supposed to enjoy sex has probably ended up being a self-fulfilling prophecy for quite a few women out there, who were too embarrassed, ashamed or just didn't think about exploring their own bodies and learning about their sexual needs and preferences. And with today's porn culture, I'm sure there's a whole new problem of girls should like sex, but when it's done in X way for a man, just use I was trying to be nice as your excuse next time Lamau. The smells. You haven't thought of the smell you bitch. Needs a scratch and sniff textbook. Truly awful idea here's an upvote. How fun it was. Sex education basically amounts to don't. Sex adduxation makes me feel so uncomfortable about sex. It's just a bunch of sicknesses I can get. I'm a teenager and have never had it, but of course think about it a lot. But the stuff our teachers say about it make me so disgusted. Even though I know sex isn't just all negative. But they rarely teach us anything useful. I'm not saying that they shouldn't tell us the negative things, but some of the do's would be great, too. Realistic sex talk. From someone who taught sex ed for 5 years. 1. When you're young slash inexperienced, have sex with people you have strong emotional connections to, people you feel safe with, people you can openly talk about every aspect of sex and aftercare with. 2. Age differences matter. Stick to 2 years within your age until you're over 21, then you can fudge to 24-25. Don't date under 21 once you're 23. At 23, you can date within 4 fifths years of your age. At 26, you're good to date almost anyone. This is a life experience thing, not a maturity thing. 3. If you're having sex, even if only with one person, get regular STI checks. Once a year, ask for a full panel blood test. 4. If you're having casual sex, use a condom. 2 women? Dental dams. Toys? Condom. 2 men? Condom. 5. Look into prep if you're going to have casual sex. 6. If you aren't having fun, stop, or ask for what you want. Communication is key. Sex is supposed to be painless, even the first time, unless you ask for pain. Sex should be fun. Laughing is fine, and can make it better. Orgasms aren't necessary. 7. If they say they can't use a condom, laugh and walk away. Let that be someone else's problem. 8. If you can't be honest to your partners that you're sleeping with multiple people, then you shouldn't be sleeping with multiple people, and that's okay. 9. Consent should be verbal and never coerced. 10. Foreplay is incredibly important, and can start long before touching even begins. 11. After care is just as important as sex. Ask your partner what they need. That's the very brief overview of my three-week sex ed program. Edit. Typo. Aftercare. A simple wash before if possible and always pee after would prevent so many UTIs. Also, don't fuck on dirty bed sheets. Edit. For the curious, one of the times I got a UTI was when I was too caught up in the heat of the moment and didn't realize the bed sheets weren't clean until after the fact. 
I had years of sex before I met someone who took aftercare seriously. They never actually told us about the act of sex. I was 14 and didn't know the penis was supposed to go in my body. I thought it just rubbed along the labia. Imagine my surprise a few weeks later when my first boyfriend got frisky. I remember hearing an interview with a doctor from the Bible Belt area say that she was surprised about the amount of young couples coming in who were confused why they couldn't conceive, only to discover that they were putting the penis in the belly button. This. How don't they actually tell this? I mean. Yes, they tell you that testicles produce sperm but it was never mentioned how to get it out of there. I actually thought that you have to somehow put your balls in the vagina. Good thing that porn exists. I mean, there's a huge disparity of sex ed quality. I am certain in mine they did not leave out the details of where the penis goes. Not me but for the guys I've gone out with, an astounding portion did not know they were circumcised. They knew circumcision was cutting off the foreskin, but no one bothered to show pictures of what the foreskin was. Always a shock to them when I showed a picture of what an uncircumcised penis was. Grade 7 sex ed, teacher shows a diagram of a penis that looks just like mine. Tip is labeled foreskin. It was 11 years later that, in a moment of excruciating awkwardness, a sex partner informed me that I was, in fact, circumcised, and I realized that diagram was wrong. I'm curious what you thought circumcision was with the diagram from 7th grade? Like did you think they chopped the whole head off? Ouch lol. I grew up in an extremely white, extremely Christian town. When I was in high school, a Jewish kid moved town. So many guys made fun of him for being circumcised that he ended up leaving the school very quickly. It was disgusting and sad, but also hilariously hypocritical. I would bet money that every single one of those guys was circumcised, being white, Christian, American boys born in the Midwest in the 80s. Breathing techniques for giving oral. I love doing it, but had asthma growing up, so I get out of breath quickly, which makes life difficult when you're beard deep between a pair of thighs and want nothing more than to just stay pressed against them. But you kind of don't want to pass out from lack of oxygen either. Worse ways to go out. Hey, I'm a free diver and I have tips for you. What works underwater works with people. Zero, fill those lungs before going down. One, when you're hilled into your breath, there's an initial moment where your chest squeezes and you burst out with a gasp. It's a lie. If you push through that, the average person can get anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute more. 2. Calm is your friend. Stay in the moment, relax, let your heartbeat slow down. You have all the time in the world, it's just you and the task at hand, don't waste air or energy. 3. Keep your throat in line with your chest, don't tilt your head or you'll lose air supply. 4. Practice some breath holding occasionally. You can expand your lunch capacity by almost double with practice. A little bit of training can get you 3 plus minutes. 5. Technique is everything. The more efficient and effective you are, the better you can make use of the time you have. If you can stay there for 2 minutes before coming up for air, you want to get stuff done in that time. Use your whole body, move as carefully as possible, and get to your target quickly. 6. If you push yourself to the absolute limit every time, it'll suck, but push yourself a bit a few times in a row and your body will naturally adjust. After about 5 short warm-up dives, you'll start getting significantly longer down times. The average person can hold their breath for 2.5 minutes with no training, just a little effort. I'm a pretty weak diver with a 3 minute surface hold and a 1.5 minute underwater time, but that's enough to impress people. Funny thing was, this was pretty much my solution, looking up tips for diving. I've improved my lung capacity to something approaching normal, despite my lungs not being good, and adapted various diving techniques for other sorts of breath play. Biggest problem is staying calm, being at that all-I-can-eat buffet may be the thing I enjoy most in life. I want you to like, pretend to rape me, not in the manual and absolutely freaked me out. CNC, consensual non-consensual, is a surprisingly common kink, mostly among women in my experience, but that might be selection bias since. Well, if you have that kink as a man you probably aren't talking about it openly. It's one of those things you need to have a serious discussion about limits and safe words before you engage in though, and only participate in with someone you trust. A there's different forms of non-consent and I have always wanted to be woken up by a blowjob, but you can't consent if you're sleeping. It's not the same as the previous post mentioned, but it's the same sort of kink. The emotional and intimacy aspect of it as well as the anxieties and not to mention not emulating all the crap you've seen done in porn. The first time I had sex I essentially was in a push-up position the entire time while jack hammering as hard and intense as I could because that's what they do in porn. Fucking hardest one minute workout of my life. That poor girl.
Don't go in the pooper and back in the pussy. Or from pooper to mouth.